Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, yesterday we had what I believe will be viewed as a historic hearing in the Senate Judiciary Committee. It's a committee I've been on for now about four and a half years. Uh, the Attorney General, Mr. Barr, came before the committee to answer questions about the special counsel investigation, an investigation that took 675 days, cost more than $25 million, had 34 people indicted, including Russian nationals, more than 2,800 subpoenas, 500 witnesses, 500 search warrants, more than 230 orders for communication records, and 13 evidence requests from foreign countries. I think by most measures, that's considered a pretty extensive investigation. Back about two years ago, in August of 2017, Senator Graham and I and a couple of other members actually filed a bill to make it difficult to have a special counsel removed before an investigation had been completed. I actually took a fair amount of heat from people on my side of the aisle for doing that, but I believe that we needed to have this investigation run its course, and it did. And it culminated, it culminated in a more than 400-page report that now is largely available to the public. In fact, of the 400, I think it's almost 440 pages, 90% of volume one, which is the volume that talks about Russia tampering with U.S. elections, 90% of that is available to the American public. In volume two, the volume focused on whether or not there was obstruction of justice, 98% of that was made available to the American people three weeks after the Department of Justice received the unredacted report. And now, for the leaders of the Senate, 99.9% .9 of the special counsel's report is available. Now, you could say, why not 100%? Because we have rules here, and I think it's also important to point out that the Attorney General had no legal obligation to release any of it. This can be deemed a confidential matter, and it could never have been available to the general public. But the Attorney General took the extraordinary step of making sure that as much as possible could be made available, and he did a great job. And I might add, throughout the entire process, the White House had the opportunity to assert executive privilege, they could actually have portions of the report blocked out or to have it redacted, which falls short of that. The White House never reached out and requested any omissions or actually redactions of the report, which means you can't read it publicly. Not one in the nearly three weeks, three and a half weeks it took for the Attorney General to get the report ready for public consumption. Now, some people are wondering why did it take so long? because the process of redaction has to take into account basically three different considerations. You have to determine whether or not there's a matter there that could be embarrassing to a party that had no involvement, they were just a witness in the investigation. It could be because there's ongoing investigations, or it could be because it's a threat to homeland security. But even with that, 90% of it is available to the general public on Russian tampering, 98%. The reason I tell you that is you're hearing yesterday, if you sit on the Judiciary Committee, I'm not a lawyer. Um, I'm a business person who's been on Judiciary Committee for four and a half years. So I don't necessarily go at this uh, debate the same way that maybe an attorney would. But we had a lot of the, the people in the committee really trying to mislead the American people. They were saying that there was wrongdoing because the Department of Justice had to take about three and a half weeks to get the report ready for prime time. And we're saying the report's available. It took about three or four weeks to actually make it available, but they are almost suggesting that that was a criminal or obstructionist act themselves. Some, instead of going down that tact, said that a letter, and I have to explain the timeline, on March the 24th, the Attorney General issued a letter saying that the, the bottom line of the report that they were reviewing was that there was no crime committed by the President and that there was insufficient evidence to even suggest that there was obstruction. Now, you have to understand these two working in play. The crime that many of my colleagues and friends on the other side of the aisle said that the President committed never happened. 
after 675 days and all the interviews and all the warrants and everything that I've said, there was no underlying crime. Now, the second half of the report is about obstruction. Now, this would be obstruction in an investigation that concluded there was no underlying crime. The president was deemed not to have committed a crime. The president was deemed not to have committed obstruction of justice. So now we turn to a request to have Robert Mueller come before the Judiciary Committee so that they can ask him questions. What questions could he possibly answer that's not embodied in a report that took 22 days, $25 million, hundreds of witnesses, dozens of full-time professionals? What more could Robert Mueller possibly say in a three or four hour hearing that's not embodied in this report and within the full view of the American public? I don't think it's about that. Actually, one of the arguments that was used in the committee was we need his advice on how to prevent Russia from tampering in our elections. Really? I don't need an attorney's advice on how to prevent Russia from tampering in our elections. Prosecutors determine whether or not laws are broken. Robert Mueller is not a professional in cybersecurity and election safety. He's actually a prosecutor who finished this job. Some of the other ones said, well, the reason we wouldn't take his input is because the president's not interested in securing elections. Well, I would ask them to go back to the classified briefings that I've sat in and that they've sat in, where the administration has clearly taken aggressive actions to make sure that Russia can't penetrate our state election systems and that they can't meddle in the way that they attempted to in 2016. So what this really boils down to is theater. Some of it almost to the level of comedy. And let me give you an example of what I mean. There was a House hearing today. And I'm about to put up a picture that actually was on C-SPAN, that actually occurred in a House hearing. You tell me whether or not the chair of that committee is actually serious about this subject when you've got a guy eating fried chicken in place of where they wanted Attorney General Barr to be. This guy didn't even have good enough sense to have Bojangles chicken. And they've got the chair and others letting him have that kind of theater in a House committee room. Really? I mean, can you honestly say you're serious about this? Or is this like a circus and a political tool because you lost? You wanted the president to be guilty. You wanted to prove that he obstructed. I get that. A lot of it was a political exercise, but the bottom line is... After 675 days, almost $30 million when it's all totaled up, 34 people indicted, including Russians, 2,800 subpoenas, 500 witnesses interviewed, 500 search warrants executed, 230 orders for communication records, and 13 requests from foreign countries to provide information. Really? These folks, some of them are prosecutors. They know better. But I will tell you, I think that the American people want my colleagues on the other side of the aisle to focus on what Americans are really worried about. They're worried about their economic security. They're worried about their health care security. They're worried about keeping a job. They're worried about sending their kids to college and putting them through school. If you want to win an election next year, stop playing games and stop the theater. The president is not guilty of a crime. The president is not guilty of obstruction of justice. It went through one of the most rigorous investigations in modern history. So to my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, prove what policies and priorities you have for the American people and win on the basis of your ideas, on your commitments. Stop the theater and get back to work. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor.